Greetings of the day, everyone. My name is Sumit Dua, Assistant Professor at the AISSMS College of Hotel Management at Catering Technology. Today, we're going to cover molecular gastronomy as part one series of this session. So what does mo molecular gastronomy mean? Molecular gastronomy blends physics and chem chemistry to tr transform the taste and textures of food. The result, new and innovative dining experience. So the term molecular gastronomy is commonly used to describe a style of cuisine in which chefs explore culinary possibilities by borrowing tools from the science lab and ingredients from the food industry. So within this picture, you can see on the top right hand corner is a grilled watermelon salad. With the presentation, the artistic forms and the science behind this food is totally different. And on the left hand side, you'll see um, a jaljeera, a mango lassi, and a tomato rasam created by molecular chef Abhijit Saha as an appetizer. So let's move on and let's have a look at further about molecular gastronomy. So, molecular gastronomy seeks to investigate and explain the chemical reasons behind the transformation of ingredients as well as the social, artistic and technical components of culinary and gastronomy. Molecular gastronomy is a branch of food science that focuses on the physical and chemical processes that arise when cooking. Hungarian physicist Nicolas Kurti and French chemist Herve Dies coined the term molecular gastronomy. How does this work? The molecular gastronomy works because of the interaction of different ingredients that cause various effects within them. And every recipe has underlying physical, biological, and chemical mechanisms that make the dish turn out as it intends to, or sometimes it has totally unexpected or disaster, uh, disastrous outcomes. So, molecular gastronomy, why is it important? The molecular gastronomy is important because it bridges the social, artistic, and technical ramifications of food and food preparations. By studying the science behind different culinary processes or commonly used method, chefs and scientists can understand why certain outcomes occur. In this way, there are, they are able to better reproduce favored effects as per their desired ideas. Molecular gastronomy can also confirm or refute consequential traditional culinary theories. For example, it was previously thought that strawberries, if washed, would lose their flavor. Molecular gastronomy enables chefs, scientists, and others to experiment with different food techniques, and in many cases, try to create a shared social experience of culinary innovation and delight. So within this setting, you have a totally different way of presenting a particular starter or a particular dessert in a different form, which you have not have imagined. And this is what molecular gastronomy will allow you. It will give you a wow effect. So within this picture, you have a totally different style of um, presenting uh, a matar paneer as a starter, wherein the chef has created some um, bold flavors and served in a totally different way. It is simply because molecular gastronomy makes it possible. Then you have this lovely looking starter, which is actually a mozzarella air balloon with a bit of makhni dressing, balsamic vinegar pearls, olive oil soil, 
and a combination of Russell and uh, Rasm and fresh basil. And here you have um, bacon or uh, prosciutto ham, which is uh, rolled and uh, made up with melon cantaloupe caviar. Uh, it looks absolutely stunning. And when you actually taste it, uh, you are not expecting these flavors. And which is only possible due to molecular gastronomy. Here are different ways of making up your caviar. So you have flavors like coconut, salsa, mango, raspberry, mint, cherry, pickled ginger, or just basic ginger. So this techniques are only possible due to molecular gastronomy and you are able to create various dishes uh, with uh, total art um, or, or whatever ideas you may or may not have about a particular dish. So what are the advantages of molecular gastronomy? Food does not lose its flavor and the original ingredients recreating a total healthy dish using cutting edge innovation. It is suitable for Kodaks since almost no flour is incorporated in their preparation. No fried food, hence obviously it reduces the um, intake of fat. No flavor enhancers like salt or spices are used or if they are, they are used to the minimum content. Now here is an example of saffron tagliatelle, which normally you would have flour and people who are coliacs who have um, allergies or intolerance to flour may not be able to eat it. But just because of molecular gastronomy, without the use of flour, the tagliatelle is prepared and the guests are able to enjoy this. And it absolutely looks beautiful. Molecule, the other advantage is it reduces the intake of sugar. And juice food itself is used to give the right taste without actually altering them. So here is an example of contru, wherein contru pearls are made out of um, this contru as, as, uh, as an alcohol, as a liqueur and you're not expecting that kind of food. So it increases your curiosity, your appreciation of the effort and recognize um, it as an art in compiling flavors and different combinations. So food product um, can be turned into a, a drink with a liquid state, which you're not expecting, is actually turned into small, small pearls, which are edible and could be included or uh, impregnated uh, as a part of your starter or any other dish. And obviously it is uh, quite visually appealing and I find it uh, quite stunning, to be honest. So what are the tools that are used uh, from the science lab? There are quite a multiple number of tools that are used and available on the market. Um, and uh, we shall discuss about them during the course. So liquid nitrogen for, for uh, flash freezing without allowing the formation of large ice crystals. Also used for freezing and um, shattering. Then uh, anti-griddle, which is a chilled metal top is also used for cooling and freezing. Well controlled water baths for low temperature cooking, which is also known as sous vide. Then there are things like a de food dehydrator that is used is in the picture that just come up. Uh, so various foods and fruits can be dehydrated without um, actually losing any texture and flavor. Then things like centrifuge and syringes also are used uh, for injecting uh, unexpected fillings and making of the caviar also. Ultrasound. Then something called a vacuum machine is also used, uh, which will preserve the particular food and help in the sous vide method of cooking, wherein the water is continuously uh, maintained at a certain temperature and the cooking process really, really is very slow. Hence, uh, preserving the texture and 
the flavors or rather enhancing the flavors of whatever is being uh, cooked. There are other things like pressure cookers, pH meters and tabletop distilleries are also used at various levels. So what are the different kinds of ingredients? Ingredients like uh, gelling agents like methyl cellulose, agar agar, uh, gelatin, calcium uh, lactate, liquid nitrogen, maltodruxin, xanthan gum, soya lecithin, sugar substitutes, emulsifiers like soya and xanthan, non-stick agents, then enzymes, uh, for example, transglutamase is a protein binder, binder which is also used um, or called uh, meat glue to stick meat together. Uh, then carbon dioxide for adding bubbles and making uh, foams. Hydrocolloids such as starch, gelatin, pectin, and natural gums used as thickening agents, gelling agents, emulsifying agents, and stabilizer, sometimes needed for creating different kinds of forms. Now this is an actual picture of agar agar on the right hand corner for yourself for reference. So begs the question, so many chemical processes or biological processes are used or scientific equipment are used or there are physical changes in a particular food product. So is molecular gastronomy really safe? That's the question uh, many people ask or it comes to their mind, but they might not speak up. The answer, simple answer is yes. Molecular gastronomy is generally considered safe, especially when experimental food creations are consumed in moderation. It further depends on the quality of the ingredients also used. So for example, naturally occurring emulsifiers and hydrocolloids, which are thickeners, uh, like gelatin or agar agar are absolutely safe to consume. On the other hand, cheaper emulsifiers like soya le lecithin have potential side effects like bloating and nausea. Additional concerns involve the use of certain additives and other ingredients like liquid nitrogen fumes and xanthan gums and calcium salts is a cause for concern because there's not much uh, study or research has gone into their use yet. When people hear the words molecular gastronomy, like I mentioned earlier, or molecular cuisine for the first time, they often mistakenly view it as unhealthy or synthetic or chemical or dehumanizing uh, and unnatural way of cooking which may or may not be the case. Hence, as, as long as you consume all the food in moderation, you are always going to be on the safe side. The truth is that the chemicals used in molecular gastronomy are mostly of biological origin. Even they have been purified and sometimes processed, the raw material origin is usually marine, as in water-based, uh, or uh, extracted from the sea or rivers, plant-based, animal or microbial. There are, these additives have also been approved by the EU standards, which stands for the European standards, and are used in very, very small amounts to give the desired effect. The science lab equipment used just helps modern gastronomy cooks to do simple things like maintaining the temperature of the cooking water constant, like in a water bath. The cooling food are extremely low temperatures fast, which is uh, wherein liquid nitrogen is used, or extract flavors from different kinds of foods, wherein an evaporator is used, wherein the food is boiled, as you can see on the right hand corner, the food is boiled and it's steamed for a long time and it's a process of distillation, an evaporator is used and the flavors uh, that steam up or evaporate, they are collected on the left-hand side of this balloon here at the bottom. Pretty much like the extraction of uh, crude oil, uh, extraction of petrol from crude oil. 
there is still some debate out there about the healthiness of molecular gastronomy. But it is believed that there are far bigger health issues in everyday food that we consume. Hence, in the end, you're not going to eat liquid pea spears, for example, every day, any which way. So you're not going to go into a molecular gastronomic place uh, on a daily basis and consume this food. So it's perfectly safe is what is being promoted at the moment. So molecular gastronomy kit. Um, now, this is a bit of more information for you, wherein you can buy these molecular gastronomy kits uh, online these days from various websites. And uh, the kit includes different tools, ingredients, and sometimes a recipe book. So you can experiment with molecular gastronomy methods at home also. These kits include molds, spoons, syringes, pipettes, and sachets of agar agar, calcium lactate, sodium alginate, and soya lecithin. So you could uh, experience various kinds of uh, techniques. So within the picture on such, you have uh, our various uh, effects of caviar that they have used um, by, by employing these molds, uh, spoons and syringes and pipettes to uh, get the desired effect and flavors from various ingredients or everyday foods. You got to remember molecular gastronomy provides a platform for chefs and home bakers alike to experiment and share their unique dishes around the table. Consider incorporating molecular gastronomy dishes into your next restaurant menu or just at home, add a technique to an appetizer at your next dinner party and see if it wows your guest. That's it for today. Thank you very much, guys. These are the few references you can also refer to. Uh, I have quite a good, good information in there. Um, and there's certain images that I have extracted from Google, which are allowed to be used for educational purposes. So in our next video, we shall get more insight into what tools are used, methods and techniques used, utilized in molecular gastronomy. I may be able to share a couple of videos also. So thank you very much for tuning in and do remember to click on the link in the description box for a quick quiz on molecular gastronomy. Thank you very much again and have a very good day.